but on this uh, on the note of this uh, this um uh super chat from the ministry of uh, wrong think about making game characters ugly tom i put uh, a link up behind the scenes here in the private chat can you put that up on the screen because we have another game to talk about today namely tomb raider chronicles that's oh that's a ta perfect. that's the tabletop game yeah yeah what can you tell us about but this one so this this tabletop company, Evil Hat Productions, I think the name of it is, also known for their tabletop game, Thirsty Lesbian Pirates, or something. My favorite game. Are you serious? Yeah, big, big, uh, big hit that game. <laughs> Thirsty Lesbian something. That's that's the name of it. I can't remember, but okay. This sounds like like a porn title from like the nineties or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, now you can tabletop role play it. So girls gone wild. Yeah. Uh, they so what the notable thing here is that they actually worked with Crystal Dynamics and they signed off on it. So this whole game is about her being a truth teller and uh, stopping colonialism. No longer is is Laura Croft going to have artifacts on her mantle. She's telling the truth now. Which so she's not Tomb Raider. Is what you're saying? Like this is stupid. Like you're turning everything that the game was about on its head. No one's gonna buy. Maybe this game. she'll turn into a dude and become Womb Raider. Yeah, Thirsty Sword. Yeah, Thirsty Sword Lesbians is the name of it. Thank you, DC. Are Batman. you fucking kidding me? Is that a real thing? Yeah, it's a real thing. Yep. I, I, I read my video saying, on this. Uh, again, that's a. What the fuck is this world coming to? That is like ten things today where I swear I've got to still be fucking sleeping because that can't be a real goddamn thing, but it is. Somebody at Crystal Dynamics saw that thirsty sword lesbian said they have to make our our Warcraft table. Apparently, Crystal Dynamics is one of the mo most woke outfits out there. With a title like that, they better be. No, no, I mean like Crystal Dynamics, the company that originally distributed, they didn't make the most recent modern Tomb Raider. The remaster, no. The remaster. Well, I'm, I'm they, talking about But they, they slapped a warning label yeah. on it. Yeah. Because they're ashamed of it. Her, uh, Lo, uh, Melanie Mack and Razor Fist both said that they, they have resentment towards the old ones, and they didn't want that to come out. They did not want that to come out, and uh, that's mostly because they have their androgynous Lara Croft reboot coming out soon. And they want to prop that up and take people's kind of take that game out of your out of your mind for a little bit yeah because this is where we were told that they would be going back to her classic look but i guess that only it's not her classic look. The outfit that's a dude cosplaying as laura croft yeah i was about to say like those arms that those are some mighty masculine arms right there and by that i mean um if a woman goes to the gym and she buffs up, which I fully support, many women are afraid of doing that because they're afraid that they'll get really bulky and look like this. No, 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 no. If you're a woman, you have natural estrogen. That's not going to happen. Well, they will, Those but that's like after right they there, got, they would look like that with a pump, but it would go away. Like it, it's not going to stick. It doesn't yeah. stick. But that woman right there, that's a very masculine build of those arms right there. The face isn't like if you compare that to how it looks in the reboot game, like this one, they still kind of gave her a little feminine look here in the face. The the official reboot character has that jawline and everything. There's pictures of her with the hair like somebody swapped out Laura Croft's hair. And put Leon S. Kennedy's hair on it, and it's a dude. <laughs> I wish I could find that picture. Yeah, I don't have anything to add to this shit other than stuff that'll get me in trouble. So I'm just gonna. Hey, you know it. what? Uh, you know what? Uh, let them do what they're gonna do, and let the market decide. I would say that the bigger issue here, other than uh, than what was done to Laura Croft physically, is what was done to her mentally, because she is no longer a Tomb Raider. She has realized the error of her ways, and she will now go around 
practicing that treasures must be returned to where they came from, from people who can't preserve them in the first place, uh, and that all other tomb raiders need to stop what they're doing. So she's now a social justice activist. To me, that is, if anything, the greater sin than what was done to, to her physically. Because if she physically had been the original um, character, that wouldn't have helped when they have subverted her this badly in terms of her personality. Because even if this is a tabletop, it's adhering to all of the Xbox DEI criteria, every single one. She's not sexy, and it's all about DEI all the way. Well, if they should come out with Untomb Raider, where she goes into the museum, steals the artifact, and returns it to the soil where it was first dug up. Yeah, so exactly. Be... So the local populace can destroy it. That would be exciting. Or, or sell it in the local <laughs> bazaar or something. That's, that's right. No, because, I mean, this is a point that Mr. H made, and uh, he's not wrong. Much of the history that we have today that has been preserved has been preserved by the Brits, the British, the British Museum. And were it not for them, much of it would have been lost. Because many places around the world, the people who happen to occupy the lands right now, aren't necessarily interested in preserving ancient prehistory. Quite the contrary. They're just trying know. to rewrite history. I, I know. ISIS did a very nice job of reconfiguring that giant monument in Syria. Yeah, I see their perfect example. Uh, this is one of the a a oldest temples in, in civilization. What yeah. they do. Blew it, it was a huge hell. loss. Same thing that the Taliban did with, uh, with uh, some statues there. Also older than, than, than history itself. And they blew it to smithereens. And that's exactly what I mean. And also when you had like the riots in, in Egypt in around 2012 or something like that, local populace stormed the, uh, the, the uh, Egyptian museum and they even decapitated a mummy. So, um, yeah, not everything should maybe be returned. Because not everyone who who occupies the historic lands right now are interested in preserving the history that goes with those lands. So I think that this game right here, it's bad in everything. It's bad when it comes to, to Lara Croft, but it's even worse when it comes to her philosophy, because her philosophy is one step short of rewriting history. And so, but Yellow Flash, this game right here, is this something that is seeking crowdfunding right now? Is that how we understand it? I don't think so. I haven't, I think it's just going to go to stores. Well, I hope Amazon. it will collect, uh, collect uh, uh, dust on shelves there. A lot of these table, and I don't know about this. Oh, one you didn't even show. You didn't even show the Burger King's Kid Club that she's in there with. Uh, no, you, I don't have that. You can't but, see uh, the. You can't see the person of color lady who's also fat. And if you has got those, it, she has those two things. I don't know what you call them—the jumper legs, so they can run when you're missing your legs. Um, I don't even know what you call. Yeah, them. I don't remember. You have the, to get Mark. I know what you're talking you about. The blades, but... you mean? Yeah, the and blades. She's got those yeah. running blades. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But anyway, no, I see like, here on the webpage, uh, crowdfunding for Tomb Raider Shadow. I was just going to say. Oh, it yep. is crowdfunding? Can you send that? I was just going to say, most of those are crowdfunded, and they don't, yeah, they don't go to stores. Like the crowdfunding that. begins in 2025. Oh, I can't wait to follow that crowdfund. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. So this is basically just like announcing it and uh, that it's developing, so they're going to try to diversify it as much as possible to make it appeal to as many as humanly possible by making it as niche as possible so that just 10 people will like it in the end and that's when they're going to go live within 2025 this one is going to be fun to follow yeah i was that was what i was going to say is 90 percent of these tabletop games are usually fan made in some way and most of the ones i've seen aren't all that successful. And we're talking about some that are pretty popular IPs and aren't all that successful usually. So. All 
I wonder how much it'll need to make to get funded. I'm the curious. Tabletop game? They're not yeah. as very expensive. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Printing's expensive. It is well it, on a level of compared to like say doing like a video project or something like that. Um, it's probably on the, a little bit more expensive than know. a comic All book. That's digital distribution. Mm, well, it's still got well when you're doing documentaries and other things, you still got to pay to film stuff and all that kind of stuff. It costs a lot of money. Like I'm part of a lot of the we were part of. I don't even use film anymore what i'm talking about is like we we were part of like the creative uh vc documentaries like the uh in search of stuff those take a lot of money to go out and shoot that stuff like you have to have them you know fly places or fly oh yeah for the and travel and stuff yeah that's all different. that kind of shit adds up to, to a people. point to where like what i'm saying is like but you can make a movie table. you could make a movie in the woods or a desert i mean like it's still gonna Western, cost you quite cheap. a bit Here's my point is, is one of these tabletop games probably costs maybe 10, 15% more than it would to cost to, to print a comic book. That would be my guess. Cause it's all cardboard. It's all printing. It's all, you know, it's just your basic stuff. It's not like you're mass producing like discs or something like that, that are where you're going to have to buy a certain amount. I doubt it's that expensive, but not too many of them get funded all the way or are that popular from what I've noticed. Some of them are okay, but. I've, I've seen some pretty up, popular depending IPs. on how many so that's a hard cover and all that stuff probably like thirty thousand dollars to print that for the whole thing yeah yeah because it's got hard it's a hard cover yeah well, that's what i'm saying a little bit more than what of what you would pay for a for, for well, a comic book there's hardcover comic books tom well if you do that it's the same thing then yeah there you go this clip was taken from Midnight's Edge in the morning, which streams live every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 9am Pacific Time on the Midnight's Edge main channel. There you can send in your live questions and comments before clips and full stream replays are uploaded to Midnight's Edge live archives. We are also on Twitter, Rumble, Odyssey and Facebook, so smash that like, help share, subscribe and join us.